Hi, it's Rich. Um, so I've had a problem with my LiftMaster garage door opener. Uh, it works fine from the door. You can either raise, lower, or stop it in the middle, and that is, um, and that's good. That's what it's supposed to do. the uh, The problem I had was with the remotes. So if you pressed the remote on uh, either remote, the garage door would open, and it would go up to the top. You could not stop it in the middle. It would go all the way up. But when you pressed it again, it would not go down. It would just stay there. But I did learn that if you waited until the light went out, which I think is about four or five minutes, then you pressed it, then the door would close again. As long as the light was on, the door would not open or it would not close, depending on what it had just done. But as soon as you let the light go out and press the button, it would go ahead and run again. Uh, searching all across the internet, I found that it was a capacitor that was bad on the logic board and uh, all you have to do is replace the capacitor which is relatively cheap I think I've ordered six or seven of them uh, as a group for like eight bucks nine dollars and it's uh, on Amazon so here's the capacitor um, I don't see any brand on this one it was Panasonic capacitors that I ordered from Amazon uh, it is a um, 330 microfarad MFD and it's 35 volt and on the edge of it you can see that it has a minus sign which points to the negative pole and I'll have a picture in a minute about that. There were two reviews on this. Both of the reviews said the people used this to repair the problem that they had with their garage door openers not working properly with the remote controls. So I'm very positive about this being able to take care of my problem. So as I was saying, this is the back of my LiftMaster one half horsepower professional line garage door opener. This is the circuit board that I'm going to remove. You have to remove the wires at the top. The posts are color coded. So the red wire goes on the red, number one. The white wires go on the white box, which is number two. And then it's supposed to be um, a black wire on number three. And, uh, and that should be it anyway. And then there's the green button for syncing. You press and hold that. The instructions are up here. So to take this off, you just, first of all, you unplug the opener. Make sure you don't have any electricity going to it so you don't fry yourself. Uh, remove the, the three sets of wires up here. And then there's four screws. One, two, three, four. Each corner. The bottom two are coarse thread. The top two are fine thread. Now, I don't know why they did it that way, but the front of this thing is exactly the same way, so don't get those two sets of screws mixed up. It just makes it a little bit harder to put it back together again. Once you take those four screws out, at the very top, there is a... Uh, a wire connector, a bundle, and it just pulls up. You just, when you take the screws out, just pull that top up a little bit and you can pull that bundle of wires there to disconnect it. And then once that's off, then this whole board will come out. After you've done that, when you turn it over, you will see that there are five screws. Uh, let's see, one, two, uh, where'd you go? Three, four, and five. Remove those screws, and then the circuit board is easily removed. When you have removed the logic board from its case, you will need to locate, remove, and replace the capacitor. This is the capacitor. On my board, it's marked as C22. You'll need to remove that one. These others are all small capacitors, and you don't need to worry about those. That's the one you want to remove, and you need to locate its pins on the back side of the board, and then desolder them and remove that. You have to remember to be careful not to apply too much heat, because what will happen is that you will loosen these um, strips which are actually uh, conductive lines and you can if you apply too much heat you'll remove those from the board so be careful 
use a low wattage soldering gun to do this or soldering iron it would be better. The capacitor will have two pins on the bottom and they are polarized. So on the capacitor itself you want to look for the pin that has a plus on it and on the circuit board that pin will go into this hole where you see the plus sign and that is right on the edge of this. It's difficult to see here but that's where that one pin is and the other one will be the negative and it'll be on this side or directly underneath it. We have removed the capacitor and that's where it was seated. It was right down in here and it looks like it's uh, uh, set for two different sizes of capacitor in, on this board. Both of them are positive but on the reverse side, they're, they both solder to the same general area. And then this would be the negative. And when I took this out, I believe if I go back and look on the video, this side with the white bar on there, zero, I guess that's negative on there. Anyway, it was sitting in there like that. And we heated up the other side and lifted this out. This is the back side where I took it out. It was at this point here and this point here and then this hole was the that's the extra one for if it's a wider one than, than what the original one was so anyway that's all i'm waiting on is that part and we can put the whole thing back together again so this is the replacement it came today and the microfarad rating 330 and the voltage 35 are both um, within spec and uh, there's a, this indicates that it's, th this is the negative pole, which on this one is the shorter one. I'm going to install it and then we'll give it a shot. Okay, I have replaced the capacitor. This one, C22 on mine. And um, oddly enough, I, I have another board. And I looked at that one, that's uh, it's not even C22 on that one, it's C31 on that board. They're supposed to be the same. And the company that I bought it from says that it's supposed to work in my garage door opener, but it does not. So, I don't know. I'm hoping this fixes my problem. Um, and uh, if you remember, I did caution you about soldering and being careful. And I was anything. I tried to be careful, but this, this, these little circuits, they just opened up. Uh, kind of melted and popped out. I, I ran some continuity tests, compared it to that other board, and everything seems to be okay. I've just got my fingers crossed that everything's okay in this. So I'm going to put it all back together and stick it back up in the opener and see what happens. Okay, we've got the board installed in there, and um, I know it's already working because I gave it a, a test just now to, to make sure. And uh, so the light is on, and when the light was on before, it would not open the door. And now it opens the door. And I can stop the door in mid-flight and then close it again. So yay, that fixes it. Now I'm going to try the other remote. I think both of them have been synchronized before I did all of this. Yep, it works. Okay, so we're a happy camper. Both of them work now. Um, and like I said, the other board that I have, there's the letter number at the end. One was a D was the old one and a G is the new one. Otherwise the model numbers are the same on those two boards, but they look very different on the inside when I opened them up to take a look at them. But that one large capacitor is in the same exact spot. Mine was a C22. I think it was a C32 on the other one. Uh, but uh, even though it's different, I would suggest that if you're having this problem, that's what you need to do. Is just go ahead and replace that one capacitor. The microfarads and the voltage might be different, might be the same, I don't know. But uh, take a look at it, take it out, get a, another one from Amazon, replace it, and it should work for you. Good luck. Thanks.